Hey everyone, Scott Ackerman here, and uh, you're not getting an episode of Comedy Bang Bang today, a bonus episode. Today, instead, I'm bringing you a very special episode of my new podcast, totally new, not based on any other podcast I've ever done, called Are You Talking R.E.M. Re-Me? I co-host it with Adam Scott, who you know from Torque and maybe some other things. Anyway, four years ago, Adam and I started the podcast, You Talking You 2 to Me, not related to this show, where we dissect every U2 album and uh, even, you know, not to brag, but got to interview the band. And now we're breaking down every REM record track by track. So many details about um, the music and we, you know, an expert's guide basically, to R.E.M. Um, I hope you enjoy the first episode of Are You Talking R.E.M. Re-Me, and if you enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to the feed. Hey, everyone. Scott Ackerman here. And Adam Scott sitting over here, bro. <laughs> you don't care where we're sitting. Um, we're just about to get into the new show we're doing, but first we want to tell you about Lisa. Lisa is an innovative direct-to-consumer online mattress brand that is also socially conscious. Adam, do you sleep on a mattress? I do, sometimes. <laughs> what, what do you sleep on the other times? Do you just hover? Everything else. <laughs> well, everything! Hey, Scott, what don't I sleep on? All right, Adam, shut up. You know, for every 10 mattresses Lisa sells, they donate one to a shelter through their 110 program. Wow, a 110 program. And one not to ten. mention, with a patented universal adaptive feel, trademarked, Adam. Uh -huh, get off your computer. Get off your computer. No, 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 no. All right. Lisa's designed for all types of sleepers. And even, now. Even one. <laughs> as stupid as me. <laughs> Keep going. And now Lisa has expanded its offerings to include the Lisa pillow, blanket, foundation, and frame. I pray that you sleep upon a Lisa pillow one day. Try a Lisa mattress in your own home for 100 nights risk free. That's a lot of nights. Zero risks, 100 nights. No days, though. You have to ship it back during the day. Yeah, yeah. Every, every day you wake up, you bring it to the post office. <laughs> it's available in the US, UK, Canada, and Germany online with free shipping. This 100% American made mattress ships compressed in a box right to your door. American made. <laughs> Or you could try it at the Lisa Dream Gallery in Soho, NYC, and Virginia Beach, and over 80 West Elm stores nationwide. I'm going to go to all 80 of those. <laughs> I hope so. Let's and go now, on a Lisa tour. Actually, for President's Day, get 125 doll hairs off the Lisa mattress, plus a free pillow when you go to l-e-e-s-a dot com slash r-e-m. That's lisa dot com slash r-e-m for $125 off the Lisa mattress, plus a free pillow! Offer valid till 20... February, 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 February. February. Offer valid until February 28th off. Oh, it's so easy, isn't it? Well, it, they, the copy's wrong. Fine. <laughs> From chronic to collapse, town and into now, respectively, that is. This is Are You Talking R.E.M. Re.Me? The comprehensive and encyclopedic compendium of all things R.E.M. This is good rock and roll uh, music. Welcome back to our first episode. Welcome back. Welcome finally back, back. Welcome for the first time back uh you're listening to are you talking rem re me question mark question mark re with a colon uh meaning referring to what does re with a colon mean it means and i have several questions about your colon by the way after that yeah Ari. And what's going on with that? It means a guy named Ari. <laughs> Ari. And oh, wait. Ari from Entourage? Yes. Oh, yeah! Ari. It, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this an episode of Ari's colon? <laughs> But, uh, hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Welcome to uh, Ari's colon. This is Scott. This is Scott. We don't have a lot to say about Ari's colon today. It's not looking great. Listen, what can you say that hasn't already been said about Ari's colon? Not one of 
our best. It was fine. It got off on the wrong foot, I think, when I mispronounced everybody. Yeah, you <laughs> as everybody. Stupid, stupid <laughs> man. Welcome to the show. This is our first episode, although uh, it certainly is a continuation of a podcast that uh, my co-host uh, and I used to record together, I guess, is a fair assessment of what we used to do. Sure. <laughs> I honestly didn't know we were going to, or you were going to bring that up. Wait, you, you didn't know we were recording it when we first started? I, d I think it's well known. I was wearing a wire. That you were tricking me into recording a podcast. We had firmly established that we were pretending privately to record a podcast. The whole time, it, it's interesting. If you listen to the first episode of the show, You Talking You Two to Me, I'm constantly saying, Adam, could you speak into my flower that's on my lapel? Yes, it was a giant daisy. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. It's beautiful. The Gorgeous. Most beautiful flower maybe. Of all time. No, the most gorgeous daffodil, sorry, daisy, daisy I've ever seen. Do you? Uh, do and we, Scott, just shut up for a second. I have seen a lot of daisies. Really? Yeah. Where Where have you seen your daisies mainly? Well, I went to the Daisy Festival, of course. Of course, the Daisy, daisy Chains. Daisy Chains Festival of Lights. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful festival. I don't mm. miss it. Beautiful. And it's a festival of lights, not daisies. Well, but if you see a daisy there, ooh. then you're in luck because you win a million dollars. <laughs> One mi And that's how you got your start. Yep. I got a million dollars for spotting the daisy at the Festival of Lights. And that's, that really uh, helped you through the lean years when oh, no yeah. one wanted to hire an Adam Quadrero. Right. No one. <laughs> No one wanted to. And so I would say if I had a lean week, say, with no work, I would sure. say, well. And that, those weeks now, I mean, they're few and far between. No, I have fat a lean weeks week, now. Yeah, oh, big, the weeks are so big, big fucking weeks. heifer weeks. But back then, it was if I was having a lean week, I could eat $100,000. Sure. Right and my there. belly was full for a whole full day. Full of paper. Yes, one full day. Full of cloth. Because <laughs> uh, as you know, Currency, American currency, is made technically of cloth, not certainly, paper, certainly. Uh, according to my calculations. Meanwhile, uh, if I was ever having a lean week, I would have to eat moths out of my wallet. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Boy. Um, oh, Scott Ackerman, moth wallet. Hey, that's, you know what, that is a great segue yeah. into what I wanted to talk about, which was our names. Yes. You named me. Uh, this is Scott, by the way. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everybody. This is Scott. By the way, do, is there anyone you want to say hello to out there? Or, uh... um, Well, I would like to say hello to my friends. Mm. I would like to say hello to my family. Okay. I would like to say hello to my fans. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say hello to you. Scott, hello. Hello. Thank you so much for including me. You're welcome. A lot of times uh, I feel a little left out when you're saying hello to people. I don't think I've ever left you out, but I'd have to check my records. Oh, uh, where are your records kept? They're right here. Would you like me oh, to check? Oh, yeah. Them? Oh, well, oh, my gosh. You brought the entire filing cabinet yeah, full. Me, okay. Let me, let me open the cabinet. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Got to flip through these, uh, these files. Oh, here it is. Pull out this paper. Oh, wait. I have to get out my decoder ring. It's written in invisible ink. Uh, yep, I said hello to you every single time. Oh, my mistake. I wait, guess. let me close. Sorry, I have to close Got to close everything? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to put it in my backpack. <laughs> Okay. All right. Great. All right. We're ready to start the show. My, my mistake. I apologize for that. I had no idea you said. You know what? Let's just forget it happened. You seem mad, though. Well, you accused me of not only lying to you but betraying our friendship. Not right? really. Uh, not really an accusation of either of those. Uh, merely an accusation that you have never said hello to me ever in our relationship, and you're currently lying about it. And those files are fake. That is a lie. First of all, that mm. I have never said hello, hello to you. Mm. I have said hello to you at least seven or eight times. Seven or eight times over years. 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 I said at least, at most, let's say two million. <laughs> two million times. Somewhere in there? there that's a big range, Scott. It's, a, it's too big. It's a big range. It's too big. It would be too big if, if you were playing prices right. 
And uh, uh, Bob and, Barker coming up the driveway. Yeah, folks. and Bob Barker's coming up the driveway. Here and he, he comes. Says, and he says, okay, you got to pick a price in between seven or eight yep. and two million. Two million. I'd say, hey, Bob, give me nine. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Or one million nine hundred thousand ninety nine. You know, it, it, bottles of beer on the you wall, love, 99, 99 bottles of beer. You take one down, pass it around. 99, 99 bottles of beer on the way. Um, Adam Scott over here. For those of you who uh, may be new to listening to us, um, <laughs> welcome. Well, You're in for uh, a wonderful, wonderful time. Scott, please. <laughs> okay. I think we're fine. Uh, but, but you know what? There, there may be a lot of people who are, are uh, fans of the band that we are going to talk about here sure. on the show uh, who have never heard our previous show. Our previous show, this is, by the way, uh, le- let me introduce you and you can introduce me. Sure. Across from me is, I mean, I'm just going to say it, one of the finest actors of my generation. Sure. Uh you know, certainly in the generation above me, you have your De Niro's, you have your Brando's, you have your uh, Pacano's. Um, but of my generation, ones that – I mean, they were all like acting long before I was around. And, right. You know, I mean, they're, it's the elder statesman. Yeah. But of my generation, yeah. you have who? You have Eddie Nortz. Ed, the old Ed Nort. Ed Nort. And then hey. what? And then what? The nobody. It's a – Barren, barren field. It's a wasteland out there of acting. I mean, there's no one. There's no one good. (laughs) No one good. So Um, uh, he's one of the finest actors I know. Uh, He can do it all. He can do comedy. That's sort of funny. It's up for debate. He can do drama that's not that dramatic, but he's like sometimes he'll say a line and you'll be like, oh, he's more of a comedy guy. And then you watch him in a comedy, you're like, maybe he's a drama guy. It's almost like you, I'm kind of a, you would would categorize me as a tweener. (laughs) Sure. Someone who kind of just falls between the cracks. That word means what you think it means. (laughs) (laughs) It does sound like something completely different. (laughs) It really does. Um, he is currently on a show, Ghosted, which is on the Fox Network, uh, and uh, you know him from Parks and Rec. You know him from Tell Me Lies, Tell Me Big Little Lies, Boom. which I have not seen, um, and uh, I'm just going to say it, nor will I. And uh, Wow, you really did say it. <laughs> you really did say it. And- I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I know, as long as those checks clear, baby. Hey. Are the checks clearing, by the way? Because I know of, HBO every, had a problem for a little every while. Every single one. Okay, good. I was really scared, too. I brought that thing down to the bank I remember. Myself. I went to the bank with you that yep. one day, and I your said, hands Scott, were shaking. Yep. I need you to come with me. Yeah, just moral support. I need someone to bear witness. This is a mm-hmm. legal transfer we're going to mm-hmm. do. This now, you asked me to wear a mask of Richard Nixon. Yes. And carry a semi-automatic weapon as well. That's right. And I wore a mask of Ronald. Reagan, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I carried three grenades and a mm-hmm. pistol. Right, and both of us were wearing dynamite strapped to our bodies. With bulletproof vests, just in case anyone just shot Just in case us. anyone wanted to shoot the dynamite. Exactly. Yeah. We went into the bank, and I was like, Scott, just stay by my side. Your hands were shaking yes. so badly. Take the safety off of your automatic weapon. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Good tip. Good tip. Stand by my side. We're going to go in the bank, and we're just going to simply cash my check. But before I do that... Right when we walk in the doors, I need you to scream, everybody down on the ground, this is a robbery. Now, those words to me, I don't know. Individually, they mean something together. I had no idea what they, it, Out you of know. context, it's meaningless. It's, yeah, it's gibberish. Right, and it's that's why I gibberish. wanted you to say it. It was a fun game. It was. It was really fun. And now? We're very rich we're men. We're very, very rich men, and we possibly shouldn't have admitted to this. We might want to cut this out. Let's definitely cut this out. Uh, I want to welcome him back to the co-hosting chair. Adam Scott is hey. here. Go, now go ahead and give me a nice introduction. Yeah. Um, sitting across the old table from me, which is French for table, is a man who is sitting in a chair, mm. and there's a wall behind him. Boy. In front of him, a microphone. This is not as good as my interview. Beneath him, wheels upon the chair he is sitting, hmm. and right in front of him, a tabla. This 
is Scott Ackerman. <sighs> I yeah. Said some, I said some really nice things about you. I gave credits. Well, I said that there no. was a wall behind you. You're, you're, you're obviously more famous than me. No, oh, Scott. You're the person who doesn't need the introduction. Scott. I'm the one who does need it. I said that there was a tabla in front of you and that you were wearing clothes. God. You Did you mention I was wearing clothes? Yeah, that's part of the in- – uh, it's written right here. It's the introduction. All right, all right. All right. Scott, anyway, you know I think the world of you. Certainly, I think you're certainly. incredibly talented. You've always been uh, two things to me. One. One, uh, a person who when I see you on that screen, be it large, be it small, I think to myself, huh, he got another one. <laughs> and secondly, you've been a wonderful, wonderful supporter of me. Yes. Yes, I've always been. Well, I've always been a firm supporter of the arts. Certainly, the arts in general. And I fall within that umbrella. Well, you know, in spite of that, I have been supportive yes, of you. Thank you very much. Uh, we had a show called You Talking You Two to Me, where we discussed the band You Two. Hey, You Two. You Two. You Two. At length um for 20 24 episodes or so at this point Man. uh we really milked that for as long as we could we and squeezed that we squeezed damn milk. titties <laughs> <laughs> oh jesus we we like imagine bono on his hands and knees and we're just like underneath him like milking his tits <laughs> okay all right you're imagining yeah it? why do you have the world's biggest erection right now <laughs> Wait, can we get the Guinness Book of World Records in here? Because I think you might be right. <laughs> That's right. Four inches. <laughs> um, but we, uh, we, we talked about you two. Uh, g- check out that show if you uh, are interested at all and haven't heard it. Uh, we went through the entire band's catalog. Um, took some interesting uh, sidebars along the way. Sure. And, uh, and we talked to the band themselves. Talked to the band themselves. So check out uh, all of those episodes. Now, while we were doing it, um, look, w- would we love it if you 2 had 1,000 more albums to talk about? Of course we would. Sure. Why? I mean, We'd have 1,000 more episodes of a podcast to make. Exactly, and we would love that. We would. But you two are not the most prolific band, meaning they're not putting out one album a day. Right. They uh, they put out one album every few years. Every what, few years. Songs of Experience, their 14th album. They've mm. been around, Scott, nigh on, upon 37 years at 30 this point. 30-some-odd years. Something like they've that. They've put out 14 albums. Mm. To me— that's just fucking lazy. That's, uh, you know what, you two? Step it up. Yeah. Take I it mean, up a couple of notches. I, I don't want to say, know? like, take it up a couple of notches. I mean, you're, like, how many episodes of television have you been on? I mean, let's see. Uh, at least four or five episodes of television. Yeah, I've been exactly. an actor now. For what, like twenty years? Twenty years, and you've made four or five episodes of television, right? W- but th- th- make no mistake, making an episode of television takes—it's so years. much harder than making an album. Making an album is something, like you said, you could put out an album of music. You could put every out day. an album of music every day. Like, how hard is it? First of all, albums are what. 30, 40 minutes, fifty minutes, right? Eighty at most. And playing a musical instrument is. Like the most simple thing. Well, the thing is, is you can play the musical instrument while you record it and probably should. Well, yeah, that's what they do when they record an album. They go in, they sit down, they're like, uh, okay, give me that guitar. Mm-hmm. You take that drum, switch on the recording machine, and then. <laughs> and then they go, okay, 40 minutes out. later, it's out. And they just decide to do that the night before they release an album, like every four years. Exactly. So just, and, you know. So I don't know why U2 doesn't have more records out, but we we ran out. We ran out of records. Yeah. But we didn't run out of tape, nor desire to keep this going. That's right. And so when we thought, well, what do we do next? What What, 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 what is it? What is that? Thing. What's the the special sauce? You know, and and so much of uh, of what we do, yeah, is uh, inspiration. But uh-huh. I have to admit, a lot of it is perspiration. <laughs> oh man, you, you said smell it. terrible. Ugh. 
Uh, you smell great. Thank you so much. Um, so we, there are very few bands who have had uh, decade-spanning careers. Uh, Nor the impact on the two of us. Exactly, and that's that's part of it. Is uh, both of these bands started around the same time, and uh, they got sort of popular around the same years. Uh-huh. And years where we were just primed for these bands to hit us right in the butthole. Yep. And they were making music for our buttholes at the time that our buttholes were, were at gaping. that exact age where they were ready to receive all of this great music. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, so so, so uh, the bands that we decided to segue onto, they have many records, much like you 2 did. They uh, had uh, several records that defined generations. Mm-hmm. Um, that changed the course of pop music. Right? That the changed the very course of pop music itself. That's right. Um, of course, we are talking about the band the R.E.M. Doobie Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the Doobs. <laughs> uh, yes. R.E.M. 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 Uh, they, what a wonderful combination of uh, people and, and uh, musicians. Am yes. I right in this? I, for me, R.E.M. is, is they're my favorite band, but even higher than U2 as a kid. I just, they, when I discovered them and it wasn't uh, as early as I think you did, but. We'll get into it. Okay, certainly. okay, okay. Certainly, but you, but yes, you I love, love R.E.M. I, I, I love R.E.M. I think they're a, just an incredible band and they, you know, I was at the perfect age when they were at the, hitting it. Uh, at the and we'll time. talk. We'll talk exactly about what yeah. age you were, what uh, if I was a first, little boy or not, or a big boy. Yeah. Who knows what you were? Um, and what we're going to do in this series is we're going to take REM record by record and just uh, talk about what we like about it, talk about what we don't like about it. And look, if you've heard the U two show, we don't like everything U two put out, right? That's right. We uh, gave them a little tisk tisk naughty boys for some of those records. That's right. <laughs> we sure did. We took them to task. We took them out to the woodshed. We certainly and we did. gave them a whipping. <laughs> we gave you two a whooping yeah. when it came to some of those records. Oh man! But and um, they are shaking in their boots. <laughs> they, they that song get on your that boots. They get on. Yeah, that was all about exactly what was going to happen when we started this podcast. <laughs> Um, what's interesting, I think, about the two of us is we have uh, two very different uh, opinions of of uh-huh. REM. I think mm-hmm. not in not in a bad way. I uh, uh, and we'll get into it, but uh, I they're a band that I love and have all of their songs that yes. they put out. Yes. So, but but uh, so we are coming from that place of we both are collectors. We have all their songs. We yeah. spend a lot of time thinking about REM. Uh, but we have very different opinions on it. Of because which we'll I'm get my, to. We, that I'm the more kind of fanatical fan, and you may be more measured. Exactly, but okay. but but we'll figure out exactly when that occurs. And there's a lot to come here on the several episodes. Okay. We're going to do several episodes of this as long as we can, and uh, we're going to go through. As long as people through. want to keep listening, exactly. Go. Although it's I would, kind of a big ask, I, and I will say, the minute people want to stop listening, this podcast will just stop. Really? All you have to do At is think it. That second, That's it will just stop. Yeah. So let me think it just now. <laughs> Wait, you want it to stop? And now we and start now we're again. Back yeah, that, that's, you wanted to start again. It's crazy how that, that it's actually crazy. works. Um, um, yeah, I am really, I have to say, I'm really excited to do this because, yes. like I said, I'm a big fan and I love talking about these records. Yes. These are, this is some of the best and I, music. And ever. I want to say that I, in since we decided to do this, have started to go back and do a deep dive uh-huh. of their music. And it's been very uh, invigorating for me to re-listen to a lot of these yeah. records. Um, They're in- these records are mm-hmm. incredible. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to get into a lot of things over their career. We're going to get into their videos. We're going to get into videos. the magazine covers, the Magazines. award ceremonies. Awards. We're going to get into it all. all we're going to get into it all. But I think we need to start where we always start Yep. with these bands. We did it with the previous band, Yep. Hugh 2, and now with Hari M., we need to start with who are the people 
in this band. That's what right. are the names of the band members? The band members' names. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who do we got? Let's run them down. First of all, I believe, and and this this is the comprehensive and encyclopedic compendium yeah. of all things REM. It sure is. So of course we're going to start with the band members, and yeah. we know it all. That's the other part. That's the other part that a lot of people listening don't know is. We're experts. Yeah, we know the names of the band members by heart. By heart. They're in our brains. We don't have to look it up on our phone. We don't phone. have to look it up, no. Although, would you mind starting because— Yeah, let me get it I, on my phone here Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just I'm kidding. I know it by heart, okay? Sure. I'm a fan. Right. Let's run him down. We sure. have uh, on—he uh, on, holds a microphone. He, he sings. Sure. If I mean, that's reductive. In yeah. a lot of ways. If you're holding a microphone, of course you're singing. Of right? course. You're, but I mean, you know, he, he does so much. How yeah. can you just reduce it down to he sings? I know. You're right. You know, it's like, ah, I'm the singer. No, no, no. He does a lot more He's than that. so much more than that. He's a charismatic front man. Sure, sure. When That's None can dispute that. Incredible songwriter. Right, it writes uh, w- words that. Writes lyrics. Lyrics even. And then sings them out loud. Sings them out loud in front of people and sometimes to himself, I would imagine. Sure. Why not? Like, why, why not? If he you're this sing guy, in the shower? If you're this guy, why wouldn't you? Like, if you're one of the most famous singers in the world, can right. you imagine Frank Sinatra? Right. He gets into a shower. He disrobes. Yeah. He's got that, just that Sinatra bod. Oh, man. He's got that. That 60s just, man bod. Yeah, just like the the hairy belly that's overflowing over the polyester oh, pants. Oh, my goodness. And you know, back then, they took showers in their polyester pants. They did. Yeah. Um, can, can you imagine him getting into the shower and one of his many wives, who do we got? We got Ava, we have Nancy. Oh, yeah. We no, got Nancy jo- was his daughter. We got uh, Jojo. Barbara, Jojo, uh, uh, Josie, Gidget. Pin cushion. We got the old pin cushion. Pin cushion, of yeah. course, yeah. Um, can you imagine one of, one of them coming in and, and saying, hey, Frank, do you mind singing in the shower? You have such <laughs> a right. wonderful voice. And I him know. saying, no thanks, baby. Hey, as if you- I'm would- off the clock, baby. Hey, 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 toots. I'm going to do it my way. da na 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 uh, he, he would never do that. And my way ain't singing. Now get out of here. Get the fuck get out, the out, fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Hit the fucking bricks. Hey, get the, don't let the door hit you the fuck out. Hickory dickory dock. <laughs> Can I you love, imagine that? If An, if Andrew Dice Clay was Frank Sinatra? <laughs> he would love that, I bet. I am. Um, no, he would never do that. I can only imagine never, in never. the shower he would be he he would, that's life. Yeah, she would say don't don't sing. He'd be like one two one, one two, two three, three four. Hey Jude. Everybody. Yeah, he don't would sing the bad. the crankshaft song from <laughs> Lost. Hey everybody, <laughs> wasn't that the song? I come on everybody. Oh right 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 right. I thought you said Land of the Lost. So I was like trying to catch up. No, you remember the band? Yeah, Crankshaft Crankshaft, Lost. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, No, he would sing all the time. And so why would this person, the the very lead singer of Har E.M., why would he? Why would we expect him to never sing we while he was? We cannot. We cannot expect have that, that expectation. No, of course. Uh, let. Of course, we're talking about the one and only, the main man, the main man, Michael Stipend. Michael Stipend. <laughs> There he is. The The guy. main man. The front man. That's, for one of the greatest bands in the history of music. That's him in that uh, light that you shine from the back of the house. Michael Stipend. Michael Stipend. Now, moving on. It's Stipe and or Stipend? Stipe and. Stipe and. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Stipe and then an ampersand. <laughs> gotcha. That's, that's yep. <laughs> I already knew that because that's yeah, his course, name. Of course, that's his name. <laughs> moving on to the Git Fiddle. The old guitar. It's the old six string. What I got you got to give it to your mama. What I got you got to give it to your papa. Um, he sings that, I believe. Yeah, yeah, that's an REM song. Uh, we have, uh, of course, he he's one of the best instrumentalists to ever be in the game. Uh, yeah, he's uh, a, a disciplined, uh, prolific um, 
incredible songwriter and guitar player, multi-instrumentalist. Multi-instrumentalist. Played drums on a couple of R.E.M. Yeah. songs. He's if, a great... If it makes sound, uh, yeah, I think he played it. I think he can... Uh, you know, make something. Yeah, of this, I think, right? I think we'll, we're in safe hands I with mean, him. Seriously, you give this guy a coffee cup. Sure. Just oh. a coffee, just your regular dime store coffee cup that you pick sure. up off the street. And maybe something to slap against it. Sure. This you guy, know, make a hit song. One hit song. Uh, uh, sure, he can't make two hit songs out of it. No, 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 no. no Are you kidding me? No, That's no, insane. No, 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 All you've no, given him is a no, coffee cup. No, 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 no. A one hit song? Oh, yeah. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Of course, we're talking about. Peter Pe- Dollar Bill. Peter Dollar Bill in the house. In the fucking house. Shredding it up on the old Rickenbacker. Oh, you know what I'm saying? the old Ricky. Oh, Peter Dollar Ricky, Bill. you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. He does not clap his hands, though. He can't do he that. Can't, he can't do that. He do, he actually, I don't know that he has hands. Have no, you ever no, seen no, no, a no, Harry no, M no, video no, with no, his no. hands in it? The Harry M videos I've seen, he doesn't. He never shows his hands. It's one of the mysterious things about it's the group. It's very mysterious. Like great guitar player, no hands. He t- and it's just like clouds of smoke. Yes, so strange. Yes, so strange. But a, what a wonderful band! Oh, terrific guitar player, Peter Dollar Bill. Peter Dollar Bill, y'all. Michael Stipe and Michael Stipe and Peter, Peter Dollar, Dollar Bill. Bill. Let's move on to another type of guitar. Now a lot of bands do this. What's that? They have two types of guitars in their band. Hold on. What? A lot of bands, this is very common for bands. This is very, uh, it's well, almost it's, like sorry, rock and roll 101. Sorry, you're saying this is common for bands, but to me, that sounds insane. It, it, it actually, and Adam, what I want you to do is I want you to go home tonight, uh, okay. and I want you to turn on YouTube, and I want you to YouTube? just type in band. Band and okay. it, you'll a video will come up. You'll click on that. It'll yeah. take you to another video, another yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. You, suddenly you're down a YouTube hole. Oh boy, I've been down those before. I get sucked in for hours. Next oh. thing I know, I'm watching a, a Ovaltine commercial from when I was seven years old. You know, <laughs> you, you just that can't. you uploaded. <laughs> of course. Oh my gosh, uh, you're gonna notice though that most bands have two different types of guitars in them. Wait a second. Okay. Now the 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 one that Peter Dollar Bill plays. That we were uh, just talking about. Yeah. That has six strings. Uh Uh-huh. This guy, he plays one with four. Four guitars? He plays four guitars. Four guitars? Yeah. And they all have four strings. He's a 16-stringer. Wow. So does he has... 16 hands. He does not know. He okay. uh, he has 16 fingers. 16 Come on, Adam. fingers. Okay, yeah. that makes more sense. Yeah, it makes more sense. Now, he makes up for Peter Dollar Bill, who ha- does not have hands. By no hands. Six extra fingers. 16 fingers. But weirdly, the extra six Wait, are on one hand. Did this guy steal fingers from Peter Dollar Bill? That's, I think, what happened. Uh, that's not in the, the Wikipedia, which, by the way, is our only resource for information on oh, this yeah, band. Yeah, no, no, no. We don't know anything about them other than that. No. We just were introduced to them today. <laughs> right. Uh, let's talk about him. He uh, he sings uh, harmonies. Harmonies. He plays piano. He radiates on the 88s. Piano, keyboards. Mm-hmm. He plays... Uh, bass the, guitar. The bass guitar. Uh, of course we're talking about. Of course we're talking about Mike Miller. Mike Miller. The one, the only Mike Miller Mike bass Miller. guitar, keyboards, and everything uh, and, in between. Everything in vocal between. Vocal harmony, is, lead vocals sometimes. Well, yeah, very occasionally. Um, incredible singer. Well, I wonder what the difference is between a lead vocalist and a, a person who's not a lead vocalist. Well, say you have uh, – okay – the band we did the podcast about before, Bonobos. Mm, yeah, I sort of remember them. Okay. Hugh too? Yeah, right. Okay. Bonobos was the lead singer of that band, right? You know the guy he was singing? He didn't I don't really think play. that ever came up on okay, our Okay, well show. then l- let me just tell you really quickly. The guitar player, his name was Thedge. Thedge, right, yeah. Right? And then we had a, a bass guitar player. His name was Adam, Adam played, played 2,000 pounds. pounds. Right, right, And right. then the drummer, as you know, was Larry Mullen Sr.'s fa- uh, son. Mm-hmm. The, the fourth member of the group is named Bonobos, and he was the singer. He was the lead singer. Other people would do backup vocals sometimes, but he's the one that was singing the lead vocals uh, uh, for all of the songs. Okay, got it. Got it. I'm locked in now. Okay. I'm a uh, chk Safety off, buddy. Safety off um, at this point. 
We, now we've only talked about three people, and I know a lot of you are saying like, oh, yeah. that's that's probably it. Yeah, that's a band right there. Yeah, three it people. is. Isn't that the, the one more than band? the White Stripes? Right, right. But no, there actually is one more person, and th- this guy's hard to hard to spot sometimes. Uh huh. Because he's sitting behind a lot of uh, oh, right, yeah, a yeah, lot of yeah, a lot of it, he's yeah. like sometimes you're like oh is he sitting behind a bunch of crates or boxes or right I know I saw a picture of them today I was like what are those round boxes in front of him <laughs> like I can barely round, like what's he holding are these hats right what are why why is he striking hat boxes with right with his Large long pencils. et fingers yeah and and huge fingers with pencils on yeah i don't it, it's confusing i didn't understand what was going it's on it's very very confusing so i adam don't think less of yourself because when you just look at a picture like that it's very confusing sometimes you need to see several pictures sometimes you just need someone to explain it to you i thought there was only one picture that we could look at and so i was just looking at that like what the fuck is there going actually on? and this is interesting there are actually 12 pictures of this band I've only. I didn't know there were eleven more. There's eleven like more pictures. I got. I'm going to show you the other eleven because oh, you, you got to see these. Thank you. Uh, he plays uh, what I call, uh, but I'm a music fan. I call them the drums. The drums. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, agree to disagree. Okay. Uh, some people call them the poundums. Oh yeah, you mean the things you hit with drumsticks? Yes. Exactly. Oh, the poundums. Yeah, he's a. Ba- yeah, I call player. them drums and poundum sticks. Oh, yeah, okay, well, you, I call them poundums and drumsticks. Okay, yeah. So very, you know, it's west of the Mississippi, you know. The and we, then when I have a chicken leg, I call that a poundum stick. <laughs> oh, do you? Interesting. Uh, we know, of course, who he is. It's, uh, of Slapping course. The skins. Yep. It's uh, Buckbury. Buckbury. Mm-hmm. Buckbury? Yeah. Okay. Buck. Great. Yeah, he's a great drummer. Incredible, mm-hmm. incredible, incredible at it. Incredible Incre- songwriter as well. Great singer. Um, I'll take your word for that. But uh, I'm a fan, but I, I guess I haven't gone that deep into it. Well, he did backup vocals and stuff. I mean, I you know, I I have never heard those vocals. I guess I. But yeah, Buckbury, terrific. Buckbury. Oh my goodness, it's quite a name. Quite a name. You got a uh, Peter Dollar Bill over there, yeah. and then Buckbury, and then Buckbury. Yeah. Boy, uh, we, so we got all the names out. So that's what names, people finally. have to uh, memorize, or because those names are going to disappear from our consciousness. Those names are going to come up a lot, actually. Though yeah. they're, they're, we're going to be talking about these people a lot. On so you show. have to know who we're talking about to so follow along. If I were you, I would maybe write these things down, maybe make a voice memo to yourself, email it to yourself. There's a lot of ways around this problem now. Yeah. Now the technology has advanced to the point where we're, it's it's not uh, we, we don't need these post-it notes. Uh, who needs it? Little yellow thing that's Remember, stuck yeah. all over. It's Post-it like, notes, they were great for several years. Yeah. We needed them. But guess what? We don't need them anymore. Not anymore. And they're annoying. Oh, my God. Remember the days before the Post-it note, though? Yeah. When you had to you had to get like a big tub of glue yep. and put it on your paper? Well, you had to buy paper and cut the paper up into a bunch of small pieces. Smaller pieces. And then squirt slop like glue a on bunch it. of glue on the back and stick it to your computer screen. Oh, my God. Gross. And then you stick it onto some Post-it notes you had lying around. You yeah, know, you had to were... grab your Post-it notes and throw them in the garbage. <laughs> right. And then cut up your paper. Oh, my God. So we're going to be talking about the band. We're going to be talking about uh, today's episode. We're going to be talking about their very first releases. Uh, and we're talking about, of course, the title of this episode, Chronic Town, their very first EP. Uh, before we get to that, though, we need to take a little break. What do you think of that? I think that sounds good. To me. To me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. So I would quickly just like to say goodbye to my friends. I'd like to say goodbye to my family. I would like to say goodbye to my fans. And most of all, Scott, I would like to say goodbye to you. Thank you very much. I, I imagine welcome. during the break we're just going to sit here yeah. staring at each other. Yeah. So no need necessarily to say goodbye, but uh, I appreciate it. And uh, you've never said goodbye to me. So this is a very special uh, very special day. So thank there's you a, so much. There's a, there's a first time for everything, Scott. <laughs> there certainly, certainly is. Speaking of first times, this is our first time on this Whoa. show. So we are going to be... Right back with more Are You Talking R-E-M Remy 
We are going to be right back. Adam? Yeah, Scott? What are you, uh, what's your favorite book of all time? My favorite book? Mm -hmm. Talking to that black thing. My favorite, oh. (laughs) Hello, sir. (laughs) My favorite book of all time. All time. All time. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, from the beginning of man. From the, yes, the beginning, from cave paintings to the latest Tom Clancy. Um, Is there a latest Tom Clancy? There's always a latest Tom Clancy. He, he may no longer be with us any longer. Well, whatever the latest Tom Clancy was. Yes, it was the last book ever made. You're right. Um, you know what? Sometimes I like to just curl up, get cozy on When you the say couch. curl, you mean curling like in the Olympics, right? Yes, yes. I get out on the ice <laughs> and grab the nearest book, which is usually an E.E. E. Cummings book, just like e. a collection. E. Cummings. yeah. Because you hate capitalization. That's right. Mm-hmm. I like the Bible because it's a great value. It's a bunch sure. of it's a bunch of little books in one. No, I. It's a lot like the uh, the Richard Bachman, like the what was that that Stephen King uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, different yeah. seasons? It had sure. four books in one. It had uh, Rita Hayworth. Yep. Uh, or the Richard Bachman ones where it's the Running Man and yeah. everything. It's Richard a great Bachman. value. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was <laughs> a pseudonym. A pseudonym for Stephen King. That of Stephen course. King used very interesting mm-hmm. period of uh, of his writing. Anyway, we can both agree reading is fun. Always, I love a good E.E. E. Cummings book. <laughs> Do you like it just because comes in? <laughs> I, I, I think you may be onto something. There. <laughs> Look, audiobooks are even better than regular books because you can drive around and listen to them. You don't have to like, it's like sometimes reading a a good book, it's like a weightlifting competition. It's like, Oh, I got to bring this up to my face. Right. Especially even if it's on an iPad or a, or a, or a a device of some kind, even if it's on a lift it, a one pound device, that's heavy. It's heavy. That's heavy. One pound is still heavy. I'm not made of muscles or money (laughs) or muscles (laughs) or musliny. Um, so audiobooks are even better for that because, you know, you can learn so much on audiobooks. You can, you can uh, listen to books to feel healthier. You can uh, listen to books to get motivated, learn something new. You can probably learn how to play piano listening to an audiobook. Sure. It's like having a butler just whisper a book in your ear, just read for you. <laughs> Is that what you have at home a with butler. your big Hollywood money, yep. having a butler whisper a book? Why not whisper. regular volume? Nope. Uh, let me tell you this. Audible, with an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more, Audible has all the audio content you're going to need to start your year on the right foot. And if you're just starting your year right now, you are already starting it on the right foot, my man. That's true. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You can try books like, let's say, Fiscal You. You are a badass at making money. (laughs) What What? book is that? (laughs) That's this book that they're suggesting right (laughs) here. They're suggesting? You're suggesting it. (laughs) It's me suggesting it, and I'm not reading it off a piece of paper. Well, I have a book that I would suggest, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. (laughs) Wait, wait, okay, where are you getting that idea from? It's just a book I love. You know, I did listen to uh, Fire and Fury on Audible recently. Did you really? Yeah, the book about- Yeah, uh, yeah, the Michael Wolf book. Michael Wolf, it's about a monster who lives in a large white house. (laughs) It's like a new Harry Potter book. Yeah. Wow, by the way, Harry Potter- I don't know if that's on there, but you sure could is. you could have your uh, kids listen to it instead of all, instead of you uh, you know putting in the time to read it aloud to them. We can all go curling and listen to <laughs> Harry Potter. Look, there's so many great books, whether it's on your phone, through your car, from a tablet, or at home on an Amazon Echo. Echo. You can get tons of books while doing almost anything, and I mean anything. And Audible lets you switch seamlessly between devices, picking up exactly where you left off, Scott. That's right. So, Adam, yeah. I hope that you will start a 30-day trial and tell you what. If you start this 30-day trial uh-huh. of Audible, uh-huh. your first audiobook, free. What? Yes, free. Go to audible.com slash REM or text REM to 500-500. 500, 500. It's yeah, but a I like way. saying the, the numerals. <laughs> there you can't put it in a dash. That's audible.com slash REM or text REM to 500, 500 for a 30-day trial and free first audiobook. Oh, so there's no dash? It's just 500, 500? I don't know. It's just easier to say 500, okay, 500. All right. Anyway, you can do it. With, so can you. With audiobooks. One, two, three. Welcome back. 
to Are You Talking R.E.M. Re-Me? This is Scott. And this is Scott. And we are back. Uh, Adam took a, what's become a little bit of a tradition here on the show. He took a squirt. Had to go down the hallway and shake a little dew off the daisy. <laughs> he certainly did. There, uh, there probably has not been an episode where you haven't done that. Right after the first segment. I enjoy it. It, well, it leads me to believe that... Uh, I go masturbate? <laughs> because you're so turned on mm-hmm. by either talking about these bands or me. I don't know, and I don't want to know. Either that or I'm a coke addict. <laughs> it could be. could be. Um, welcome back. We're here talking about the band R.E.M., of course, and we have been talking about them exclusively. Um, nothing else. Nothing else. And... Uh, this is exciting because you only get one of these first episodes. You know what I mean? You only get one. You, you know, Scott, you're so right. It's it's like going to a really good movie. You mm. Walk in. Wait, wait, wait. Is this an episode of I Love Films? I think it might be. Hey, welcome to I Love Films. This is Scott. And this is Scott. And today we're talking about film. Mm. And a- Adam, uh, just before we came on air, was talking about it's like when you go and sit down at a really good movie. At a movie. At a movie. You know, you go in, you... Now, you, I don't like movies that much. Oh, listen, neither do I. But I love film. I love, love film. films. I fucking love it. I love going in, you smell the popcorn. Sell you, Lloyd. You get the ticket, you go... You, Speaking you, of Lloyd, Dumb and Dumber. The ticket taker. Just a movie. They tear your but ticket. film. Films like Film. the Godfather. Rip that ticket, just you're ripping oh, in half. Yeah. You sit down oh. in the chair, you feel it squeak beneath and your with sp- bosom, and then you know, zip, Mrs. Robinson. Oh my oh. gosh, are, are you trying to seduce me? I know. Hey, listen, that is a film. That's a film, Mike. Uh, five cents. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the best. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, there's no other way to put it. Filmmaker. You know, I'm going to be controversial here, and I'm going to say that I'm going to go. Here it comes. Just go out. Just, just listen. Just, Release the house. Just listen. I really like Carnal Knowledge, maybe even more huh. than The Graduate. Not as many people have seen it, but I love Not it. A, I don't even know what you're talking about when you say those two words together. They, they feel like four syllables, maybe? I, I don't know. even— I, I mean, know. It's, it's more it's of a, nonsense. an underground favorite, but I love it. Speaking of underground, uh, Kate Beckinsale, uh, call me! <laughs> yeah, very attractive woman. I may be thinking of Underworld. Uh-huh. No, it's it's under it's under underground. Under, underground. Well, that's been an episode of I Love Films. Goodbye. Good app. Great app. Really great. Really good. I sometimes loved we're it. too hard on ourselves, but I have to say I love that podcast. I love doing it. I love doing it. Yeah, I w- I wish we could do that exclusively. Wait a second. Is this an episode of I Love I Love Films? I think it might be. Hey, welcome to I Love, I Love Films. This is Scott. And this is Scott. And we're just here talking about the podcast, I Love Films. I love, I, I love, love films. films. It's so good. They're, they're, those guys, they know what they're talking about. You know about. what? They give a shit. Excuse my language. They give a I shit. I will never excuse that because that is unforgivable. Speaking of unforgivable, Kate Beckinsale? Great actress. Me. Very attractive woman. I may be thinking of Clint Eastwood. Same thing. Same thing to me. Same person. Uh, Kate Beckinsale, get in that empty chair, if you know what I mean. (laughs) Oh, The empty chair is my lap. All right, this is I Love, I Love Films. Goodbye. Oh, even better. That might be the best episode of anything that's ever existed in the history of this past 25 seconds. It may be because everyone's asleep because it's late at night while we're doing this. Yes. Um, yes. It's, I don't even know why we were talking about it, but the, I would never pass it up uh, no. talking about it because- Kate Beckinsale? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. 
Um, but why were we talking about it's like when you go to a movie? I don't even remember. But here we are. We're going to be talking about. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're talking about the band Hari M and uh, nothing else. And oh, yes, the, you only get one of these first episodes. Yeah. And you and wh- when you got to you step up to the plate, you got to take a mighty swing. Yeah, listen, they might throw you a, a knuckleball. They might throw you a curveball, but uh, you got to swing uh, the bat. How about a slider? <laughs> uh, they, it's not just for dinner plates anymore. Listen, it might go high and outside. I'm still going to take a swing, Scott. Uh, a knuckleball? Yeah, I'm going to take a swing. Yeah? Yeah. What, uh, what about a, a beanball? Take a Coming swing. S- straight at the head. Take a swing. Just take a swing at it. Just With swat it away. Yes. You have to because when you, you only get one chance, you get one shot. You get one shot. One of them. One of them. By the way, speaking of one shot, uh, have you seen uh, Hamilton? Yes. Where'd you see it? Here in LA. Here in LA and in uh, New York City. The how'd Big you, Apple. How'd, how'd you get your tickets here in LA? I got my tickets here in LA. Uh, I, God, I don't know. You don't That's just they just showed up. The Hamilton ferry came I down guess. your chimney. I don't remember. You don't remember. See, I really don't. you know how everyone out there is like, how do I get my Hamilton tickets? Oh, they're so expensive. I don't know how to get them. You don't remember. I I, I remember in New York. I I asked my agent if I could get tickets because it was difficult. Mm-hmm. But here, I don't remember how exactly. Just I did that. you just kind of showed. Well, up. I don't think it's it's as difficult here in L.A. Is it? It's pretty difficult. It is. Did you see it here? I have not seen it here. I've been going on the lottery every day, and uh, no luck at this point. You you'll are you serious? I am serious. You can get tickets to Hamilton. Well, if you pay up the nose and up the butt around the corner for him, sure. Well, sure, but I like going up the butt and around the corner. <laughs> I for bet my you tickets. do. Uh, I did see it in New York, and uh, uh, did you see the original? I saw the original. Yes, I did not. I did not. Lynn uh, Manuel Miranda was very nice to give me house seats. Not give me. Uh, I uh, everyone Asked for them. Yes, and I paid for them. I paid for them, but uh, it was very nice to at at you know cost. Yeah, uh, give me the, the the wonderful seats next to Ben Schwartz. Oh. Uh, and they sing that in in. You only get one Hamilton. shot. You, not uh, they sing. Uh, uh, lose yourself in the moment and you know it. it. Yeah, you never let, let it go. go. Hey, um, George Hamilton sings that in the show. That show is about George Hamilton. Yes, life it's and about. Times. Uh, it, it goes all the way up to Love at First Bite, mm-hmm. and then he slips on that Dracula cowl, oh, turns to the camera, boy. and goes, "I think I'm ready to bite something." Oh, Curtain, and then it just skips ahead to Godfather Three, and it ends. <laughs> yep, yeah. There's a whole just. It's a what we call in the movie biz a post credit scene. You know, I sorry, I feel like this might be another episode of I Love Films. I think we segued into one, yeah. Hey, this is I Love Films. This is Scott. This is also Scott. And what a, what a, We're talking about Godfather 3. We're talking about Godfather and 3, I think one And of, post-credit scenes. One of the greatest moves ever made by one of our premier American Can directors. I tell you something? Uh, can God, I finish my sentence? Godfather 2... I think it's better than Godfather 1. Wait a second. Hold on because I was I I I was going to say the same thing but one I was the, afraid of what people might say. What are the better sequels out there? You think Godfather 2 is actually better than The Godfather? I just there's something about it that I think the quality is so much better. It's, it's just epic. Okay, they go back, they show uh Vito Corleone. They're in the past, they're in the present, they're uh, in the future. And the just the redemption Oh, the redemption! The guilt. the the the, ki- the smooch. Remember the smooch? Oh, big old smooch, just big mwah, juicy mwah, lips. Mwah, mwah. I knew it was you. Fredo, I knew it was you, Fredo. <laughs> what I was gonna say is yeah. one of my favorite things that any premier American director has done is when Francis Ford Coppola mm. couldn't get Robert Duvall to be in Godfather 3. Oh, Big yeah. disappointment. But Robert Duvall, you know, he wanted, uh, I mean, it's a paltry sum these days. He wanted an extra $5 million. Yeah, which is nothing. Which is nothing now. Nothing. But at the time... At the time, it was big bucks. It was big bucks. And so, so he couldn't get him. So who did he replace him with? George Hamilton. George Hamilton. Great move. Such a, I, some, some called it a lateral move. Yeah, no. 
That uh, is a move straight up. Maybe if you're on your side and you're <laughs> making a lateral move maybe, up, up, you know, vertically. Uh, maybe if you have extreme vertigo and you can't tell ups and downs. Speaking of vertigo. Yeah. Is this an episode of You Talking You Two to Me? I think it might be. Hey, welcome to You Talking You Two to Me, the... Uh, from boy to boots, getting them on, that is. This is you talking you two to me, the encyclopedic, encyclopedic and comprehensive. comprehensive compendium of all things you two. This is good rock and roll uh, music. We're talking about Vertigo. Yeah, Vertigo is a song by you two. I like it. Me too. Good app. Yeah, that was a great app. So, when I so was we're back in, uh, yeah. I love films. And yeah. I, I have to say that uh, Godfather 3, again. So much better than than Godfather 2 or 1. By a mile. By a full kilometer. That's, okay. That's Let's what I'm say, talking about. Uh, you know what? 10 kilometers. A, a marathon, 26.2 kilometers. Infinity kilometers. That's how good Godfather That's 3 is. That's how good it is. I love it. Oh, Sophia, I knew you were going to be a great director when I saw you up there on that screen. I actually do like lots of things about Godfather 3. Yeah, me I too. I love films. <laughs> Good app. Yeah, that was a great app. Oh, man. We are in the thick of it. Yeah. But, you know, you only get one of these, so I want to yeah. t- I'm I'm swing for the fences. You know, I, enough of these these bunts yeah. that, that so many podcasts oh, take. Oh, yeah. You know what I, I mean? I'm not going to let that guy walk me. I'm going to take a swing. No, I'm, I'm not going to let him uh, hit me in the With old noggin. Big old dick. <laughs> you are swinging sorry. your dick. I'm sorry. Back and forth. I am sorry. Uh, so what I want to do in this segment is, uh, we're talking about the band Hariam exclusively in this uh, podcast. Hariam. And I want to just, like we did with the U2 show, I want to talk about the band generally before we get into Chronic sure. Town uh, and their early songs. And I just kind of want to talk uh, and see where we both uh, started with them, yeah. uh, n- not getting into the future necessarily, but I want to hear, uh, basically, Adam, what I'm trying to say is... Uh, when did you first hear of REM? Mm. For me, and this is for me, mm-hmm. um, I first heard of them back when they had their first like big top 10 hit, The One I Love, and that was on MTV. 1987, I believe. 1987, and I thought the, the video you, you was You were really, watching MTV? Yeah. The video was really weird. Um, I don't remember what happens in it. In I, the video? Really? Yeah, I don't, know. Really? I, really, I don't uh, remember. It was a great I, video. I, I, a, a lot of videos, the videos that I remember are probably 82 through 85 maybe are the ones that I remember the okay, most. so you remember no music videos after 1985. I remember Van Halen's Right Now. That's Those words. That's a great video. Pepsi. And a great song. <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, um, but I, I don't recall the okay, exact the, intricacies of the one I love video. Sure, so the, describe it for the us. The one I love video is... Uh, Turn your fucking S- phone off. Super, super artsy fartsy. Oh, it's our mutual <laughs> friend. Um, and but, but no, it's a great video, and there's no lip syncing in it. It's weird. The band isn't really in it. It's just a weird collage of images, and it's really cool. And the song itself, really catchy, but also sounded different than anything I was listening to at that time. What were you I, listening to at the time? Like, this is 1987. How 1987. Do you mind saying how old you are? Right now I'm 44, so in 1987 I was... You really have to go backwards from where you are now and you don't go forwards from your birthday? I'm going forward from my birthday, (laughs) but it's difficult. I was 14 years old, okay? (laughs) Okay. So never won an award for mathematics. I'm not claiming to. um, (laughs) It's standard birthday. (laughs) How old were you in 1986? 16. Wow, that's not bad. Well, I was born on a an even year uh, in seventy, so uh, I so it's very means. easy for me to figure this stuff. Out um, at the time, I was listening to like Bob Marley and the Grateful Dead. That was <laughs> she's calling me now. Really, <laughs> she knows this is happening and is very excited. <laughs> I'm gonna text her. Go ahead. Um, so Bob Marley and the Grateful Dead were kind of my w- main two bands at the time. Bob Marley and the Grateful Dead when yeah. you're 14. Yeah, I was. Uh, huh. So, 
R.E.M., that song was a big hit, and then it's the end of the world as we know it. And I, for Christmas 1987, my brother got me Document, the album with Whoa. What I Love and stuff. And it really blew my mind. I remember I had a learner's permit. Hold on, hold on. Let's back up a little bit. Yep. So you, so 1987, yes. the one I love comes out. I can't recall if that was a summer record or fall. A fall. It was a fall record. Uh, your brother, older brother? Or, older I don't brother, think we've talked yeah. about him yeah. uh, at this point. David Scott. David Scott. You know, Dave Scott for those My who middle know name is David. Him. Your what? My middle name is David. Cares. Okay. Um, so uh, he's older. He sees you enjoying this, or did you walk around saying, like, I really? Or, yeah, or we. Did you talk about music? We with were. Him? He's. The, he really got me into music and introduced me to. Led Zeppelin and all the later, yeah, uh, Stairway to Heaven is one of their songs. There's a lady who knows that she's walking up the stairs and mm-hmm. we're in heaven now. We're Those in heaven. No, look at all these guys with all these harps. Um, and I remember that summer too. We were we listened to the Joshua Tree by U uh, two. U two. Okay, so now you were into U two at this point or no? Well, I was because when when the, you went to the US Festival, we talked about this for U two. Yeah, you, but when that you were was a young in nineteen eighty three. You were was, just a little boy at yeah. this point. And so I remember that summer he was like, "This is U two. This is the Joshua Tree. This album is huge." And we I, we kind of he introduced that to me over the summer, and then when I loved became this thing and. And uh, he was like, yeah, these guys are good. They've been around a while, and this is their first hit. And he got So he knew a little bit about them. A bit, yeah. A bit. And he got me that album, the cassette of it. Did he did he own it as well? Or? I believe so. Okay. I believe so. Um, and then uh, – and I remember the Christmas day when I got it, I was actually 15 by this point, And I got in the car because I had my learner's permit and was driving my mom, and I put – document in her cassette player and finest work song came came on and it's a really loud mm-hmm. uh, uh kind of burst of of sa- sound really j- like jarring sharp sister, yes. jarring song and i was i was just like wow this is incredible but i was driving her car and she made me turn it off because it was too loud and crazy too loud and distracting yeah while i was uh driving her car you shouldn't be listening freaked out about you should 